I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors we're talking all about spark plugs. Welcome to Motors. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, focusing on the single most important part of your engine, your spark plugs. Yep, those little three inch plugs you rarely think about that make it all happen. Now you've got an engine and you've got fuel, but nothing gets done until that spark goes off and then all the magic happens. As part of your vehicle's maintenance plan, you need to change your spark plugs every 50 to 100,000 miles or so on most newer engines. Now this really depends on your ride, so you should check your owner's manual for the manufacturer's recommendation. Now we're going to take a look at a 2008 Honda Civic that has some miles on it and check its spark plugs to see if they need to be replaced. There are some clear signs that a plug needs to be replaced or just needs to be cleaned. So I'm not only going to show you how to inspect a plug, but also clean it if it can be salvaged. Now we're also going to show you how easy it is to replace the spark plugs in your vehicle. So when it comes time, you can save a little bit of cash by doing it yourself. This also may be a good time to upgrade with performance plugs. Now finally, we're going to look at some alternatives to the traditional spark plug, different metals and newer designs. But first, let's pop the hood on our Honda and see what's involved in removing the current spark plugs. Now for the spark plug removal, the only tool you're going to need is a 13 16 or a 5 8 deep socket with a ratchet and an extension. Now before you get started, make sure your motor is off and your engine has had plenty of time to cool down. If you've been running your engine, allow several hours for it to cool down as your spark plugs and the exhaust manifold can get quite hot. Now, since we rolled our Honda into the shop a little while ago, we still need to let it cool down a bit. So we'll be right back after this break to see what kind of condition our spark plugs are in. Well, it looks like our engine's cooled down so we can finally get to work. Now, if you have an older vehicle with spark plug wires and you have hard to reach spark plugs, then you might want to consider picking up a spark plug wire puller, just like this one. Or you can just wiggle your hand in and grab the boot, not the wire, and give it a good tug. It should pop right off. The puller is a great idea as it reduces the risk of damaging the spark plug wire. Now, if you're working on an older vehicle with spark plug wires, once you've got them off, take a look to see how much dirt, grime, and oil is around the plug. If it's real bad, just wipe it away. Just be sure to move it away from the spark plug cavity so that you don't risk tapping any of it into the chamber once you have that spark plug out. Another tip is to use compressed air to clean up the area. Just be sure to wear safety glasses. Now in the case of our Honda Civic here, we just need to remove these four coils and that requires the use of a 10 millimeter socket with an extension. Now once you have those off, you'll have direct access to the spark plugs. Now remove our coils from our Honda Civic. Again, we want to do them one at a time. We need to disconnect this wiring harness. Just press on the black tab and that comes right out just like that. Next, using a 13 16 or in our case on our Honda, it's a 5 8 deep socket with an extension, you can remove the spark plug from the cylinder head by slowly turning it counterclockwise. Now, if you're in a really tight situation, you can also use a swivel joint to help you out. Now, if your plugs feel like they've been seized into your engine or are just real difficult to remove, grab some penetrating oil to loosen them up. Whatever you do, don't use a breaker bar or put a lot of force on it. If you do, you could cause a lot of damage to the head or the plug. Now for recessed spark plugs like our Honda Civic hidden beneath coils or an ignition coil assembly, you'll need to use a piece of rubber hose to grab them and pull them out. Another tip is to put some electrical tape around your socket and extension just to make sure the socket doesn't pop off the extension and get stuck down into that cavity. Some sockets, specifically made for spark plug removal, include a rubber insert that helps hold on to the plug. Now if you're working with spark plug wires, keep in mind that you want to remove and replace one spark plug at a time. 
so don't get too carried away and remove all your spark plug wires at once. You need to make sure that they all go back in the same place, because if you don't, well then your engine is going to fire out of order. And you'll have a fun time trying to figure out which ones went where before you started messing with it all. Now if you want to be even safer, grab some masking tape and mark each one of the wires location before you disconnect them, or just grab a sharpie and write the number right on the spark plug wire. Obviously we don't have to do that on our Civic. Now grab a wire brush and clean off any of the grime around the ground electrode, the spark tip, and the threads. Now a used spark plug may be acting up just due to oil, fuel, and carbon buildup, and it may simply just need some TLC. Now, if left this way, it can reduce fuel economy and engine performance, and you definitely don't want that. Then grab some brake clean and put on some safety goggles and spray it all down, removing all the loose debris and the oil. Then once it's cleaned up, you can inspect the spark plug for wear and tear. Just look at the electrode, and if the edges aren't sharp, like they're a little bit rounded, then it's definitely time to toss them aside and install a fresh set of spark plugs. If, on the other hand, they still look pretty good, then you can probably reuse them and get some more miles out of them. But spark plugs really aren't that expensive, so you should always replace them. Now, before you put the used spark plugs back in your vehicle, check your owner's manual to find out if they should be gapped first, as some might not need to be gapped at all. Your manual should have the specific gap size information. Now, there are two different tools you can use to gap a spark plug. There's this, which is this round one, and there's another one that has these wire hoops on it. Now with an iridium-based spark plug, like the one we just pulled out of our Honda, you'll notice in your owner's manual there's no gap size information because you don't want to gap this. So we've got another spark plug that we're going to use, an older one, for this test here. So to use this tool here, you just insert it in the most narrow point of the wheel and you turn it until it stops. Now if you want that gap to be open a little bit more, you just kind of push it and it will open up. And if you want to close the gap a little bit more, you want to just tap lightly at the end and then check it. Now using this wire hoop one, we're going to take a look at the .035. What you want to do is put it in there and it should just grab just a little bit of friction, just like that. Now if it's not happening like that, you need to close the gap again, just tap lightly on it. And you can also use this end here, this tool, to put it right here on the negative electrode and twist it up that will open up the gap and you can also twist it the other way to close the gap. Now of these two tools, I prefer this one because it has this gap tool where you can open and close that a little bit easier. Now it's crazy to think that every year Ford, GM, Honda, Toyota and all those guys come out with brand new models and every few years they reinvent their vehicles and introduce new engines too. But one thing that's always remained the same is the spark plug. You'd think that someone out there would look at this 100 plus year old part and try to come up with something better, right? Well, this little guy right here has been around since the 1800s, about 150 years ago when the first internal combustion engine was invented. This 19th century technology hasn't improved since then. Well, not until recently. Attempts have been made over the years to reinvent the spark plug. Newer electrode materials such as titanium, platinum, and iridium help extend the life of a spark plug. But in the end, it's the same old J-wire design. There have been some interesting concepts too. For example, Ford Motor Company is working with the University of Liverpool right now to develop a laser ignition system to replace the conventional spark plug entirely for internal combustion engines. Lasers! One company that decided to think outside the box and come up with an entirely different design concept is E3 spark plugs. They chopped off the antiquated J-wire and replaced it with a completely new patented electro design called Diamond Fire. Now, I started doing some research of my own online by looking at various forums and E3's website as well, and I was impressed with the test results that I saw and what people were saying about the E3 technology. 
but I wanted to know quite a bit more. So I contacted E3 and I asked them to send me their spark plug test box that I've seen used on many other shows. And we picked up some new spark plugs as well as some brand new spark plugs from E3 so we could check this thing out. Now after inserting a traditional spark plug right here and an E3 on the other side, all you have to do is plug the test box into a standard 110 outlet and press the big red button. Now looking closely, it's easy to tell that the E3 spark plug delivers a much larger and brighter spark, which means it's going to burn more fuel in the chamber and produce more power. Now how does that all work? I'm so glad you asked. So check this out. Over here on the right, we've got a traditional J-wire spark plug. Looks like that. It's got the J-wire electrode that goes up like that. The way this thing fires is kind of off to the side like this. That's how its flame front develops. Now, compare that to E3. Got the same kind of traditional design like this in the spark plug. But up on top, we've got more electrode action going on. And we have a similar plume that kind of goes out the side how it fires, but since it's not blocked right here in the center, it also fires straight up and creates this huge atomic bomb-like explosion that destroys all life inside your cylinders. So here's what's going on inside. Your spark plugs have to ignite the air and fuel mixture, forcing your engine's pistons to move rapidly up and down the chamber. Each spark plug sparks about 25 times per second, so all this activity is happening rapidly, so as you would imagine, if your spark plugs are working faster, then you're going to see some improvements. Now, in the case of the E3 spark plugs, that quicker and faster burn ends up producing more pressure in the cylinder, so as a result, it gobbles up fuel a hell of a lot faster than a traditional J-wire spark plug. This translates into more power because of the higher cylinder pressure, lower emissions because none of that fuel mix is going to waste, and better fuel economy as a result. And that is where the name E3 comes from. The three E's from energy, efficiency, and ecology. Now before you go start screaming, snake oil, let me tell you that there's some major university tests that have been performed on these plugs to disprove the doubters using multi-million dollar state-of-the-art test equipment, and it's legit. The E3 spark plugs first became commercially available in 2004, but before they started stocking shelves at auto parts stores with those little green boxes, they put nearly 10 years of research and development into them. So here we are now, about six years later, and E3 spark plugs are still being highly regarded in the industry and still flying off the shelves. This ain't no snake oil, son. Now one of the reasons why they work so well is their diamond fire design of the plugs. They have sharp edges of the electrodes and those are critical when it comes to spark plug performance. The sharp edges allow the electrons to fly around in the spark zone faster, colliding with matter to release even more electrons. With the diamond fire design, they call this forced edge-to-edge -edge spark discharge, which is the best way to get a spark to leave a surface. In the case of E3 plugs, it forces all the electrons to work together to create a tiny plasma channel, which allows that spark to flow easier than a traditional spark plug. Now, to further explain the engineering behind their technology, E3 teamed up with Michigan Technological University to conduct automotive research related to spark plugs and their design. Now, as you know, I'm from Southern California. And this time of year, it's still a bit frigid in Michigan. Too cold for my liking. So E3 teamed up with Stacy David from Gears, who made the trek to the university, to find out the scoop on what the schools found out about E3's technology. Take it away, Stacy. Scenic grassroots motorsports tracks around the country, E3 Spark Plugs is quickly becoming a recognized brand in the automotive world. The E3 Spark Plug is based on a patented unique design called Diamond Fire Technology that provides more power, lower emissions, and increases efficiency. E3 is known primarily from race series and other involvements that we have from a marketing perspective. But really our company is founded in R&D. Uh, we started testing back in the late 90s and we're continuing to test today. We decided to team up with Michigan Tech because of their tremendous facilities and because of the great reputation they have throughout the country 
for producing some of the best engineers as well as some of the, the, the highest level uh, academic testing you know, in the industry for our, our type of product. Michigan Technological University is a nationally acclaimed automotive research facility committed to addressing some of the most difficult environmental issues of our time. The caliber of talent coming out of the university is staggering. Michigan Tech does about $60 million of research every year in, in a whole variety of disciplines. And that's one of the, the key things in our students to have a 90% success in finding a job in their discipline uh, within a few months after graduation. We think one of the keystones of a Michigan Tech education is hands-on training, what we call experiential learning. And so you can, you can be in a lab, you can be in a car, you can be in a, a snowmobile, you can, you can take part in, in all kinds of activities that it's not just theory and classroom work, and it's not just in a controlled situation in a lab. You can do all sorts of things and interact with people from all kinds of disciplines. It's not unusual at all to have a mechanical engineer and a business major working together on some sort of project. Part of the E3 testing effort, we not only wanted the affiliation of a nationally acclaimed research facility like this, but also the advice and input of key industry personalities. Veteran automotive engineer Jim McFarlane and TV personality and host Stacy David of Speed TV show Gears also joined us. Jeremy, this is a little different than a regular dyno that I've seen. What are we looking at here, man? What, what the early burn duration translates to is the stability of the combustion process. Okay. And by making that early burn more stable, we can run more dilution of the cylinder, and that's directly translated over to the economy. As these test protocols develop over the next few months, more of this kind of data will translate into the, uh, the increased power and torque that, that people normally relate to. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited. We've run some preliminary results so far. The results, as you can see here, are very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to continue testing both at full throttle as well as start to look at some of the part load effects. Now that we've seen what the dyno has to say, let's see what the combustion chamber test concludes. Oh, yeah. We're going in here. Oh, this is Now, Jim, what, why do these look so different? What, what's going on in there? Well, Stacy, the, the E3 technology is allowing the burn to progress more rapidly, and the, and the images there will show you, Chris, if you can go back and show the, uh, the progression. Stop it right there, if you will, please. You can see the amount of turbulency and activity going yeah. on there, as well as the speed, so the burn rate is much quicker. Essentially, you're burning more of the fuel that's there in the same period of time, and that's what translates into more power or lower emissions or better fuel economy. And this is the same. This is the same time of the burn on both of them, right? Correct. Exactly the same time. Yep. Wow. So all this burn that's going on up here, that's like you say at this point, that's more power, that's more economy. Actually, yeah. you're burning more of the fuel quicker, so you're yeah. producing higher cylinder pressure, which translates into better fuel economy. And what's why is this growing so quick? Is that because of the little cage design? Or well, again, the well, what we'll call the E3 technology creates that rapid, that more rapid burn. They're starting at the same period of time, but you can see the flame rate progresses much more quickly. Wow. Well, thanks, Stacy, and all those great engineers at Michigan Tech for walking us through the engineering side of E3 spark plugs. Those guys sure do know their stuff. Now, as you know, we're a DIY show, so now that we know why E3 spark plugs are better, let's get back to our vehicle in the shop and finish up our installation. <coughs> now, did you really think there was so much history and technology behind something as simple as a spark plug? It's incredible, but enough yapping, let's finish up and install our new E3 spark plugs. Now, one final thing before you install your new plugs, you want to put the new ones side by side with your old ones to make sure they're identical. If they look any different, double check that you bought the right ones before continuing. Now you can prep your plugs by putting some anti-seize around the threads to prevent galling and seizing. If you've got an older vehicle with spark plug wires, it's also recommended that you put some dielectric grease inside the tip of the boot. This helps create a seal between the spark plug and the plug wires boot, and it helps keep the boot from tearing during future removal as it can stick to the porcelain insulator. Now if you're installing new spark plug wires, check them out because the boots may have a bit of grease in there already. Next, simply insert the new plug into place, then hand tighten so that they are snug, don't use a wrench just yet, then once they are snug down by hand, 
grab your wrench and holding it close to the socket, not near the end as you may over torque it, give it another sixteenth of a turn. Be sure not to over tighten or under tighten them. Then once you've changed all your spark plugs, be sure to remove any tools from your engine compartment and masking tape if you use some to mark your spark plug wires, then fire up your engine. It should sound better than ever before. If it is sounding worse, then turn the engine off and let it cool down. After it's had time to cool down again, check all your spark plug wires again to make sure that they're seated correctly onto all of your spark plugs. We'll be right back after this break with more motors. Check out the Motors TV website to watch all of your favorite episodes and more. And talk with other viewers online in our popular forums area. Catch the latest news and information surrounding the show, as well as the entire automotive industry. Take Motors with you on the road with our free app available for the iPhone and iPod Touch. And win free parts by entering in our monthly giveaway. It's all right here at www.motors.tv. Who knew there was so much to know about something as simple as spark plugs? Now if you needed to replace your spark plugs on a newer vehicle because of a check engine light and you want to clear those trouble codes, you can use a programmer if you have one or a diagnostic scanner that plugs right into the OBD2 port under your dash. Well that about does it for this episode of Motors. I hope you learned something new about spark plugs and spark plug technology because I sure did. V3 has put a lot of R&D into their technology and everything we've seen looks awesome. You should definitely check out E3 spark plugs the next time you go to swap out your plugs. I want to thank E3 for helping us out. For more information on E3 spark plugs or to watch more episodes of Motors, just head on over to our website. We'll catch you next week on Motors. Now check this out. After driving the Civic with a new tank of gas, we noticed a huge increase in gas mileage. The Civic got 23 miles per gallon prior to the installation of the E3 spark plugs. Now after driving the vehicle for 323 miles, we saw an average of 27 miles per gallon. That's a 4 miles per gallon improvement just for changing out the spark plugs. Now with that being said, please note that this test was not conducted by any scientific means other than using the vehicle's computer and your individual results may vary. Still, this is an impressive difference that we just weren't expecting from switching to E3 spark plugs. Now to find out where to pick up a set for your ride, just head on over to our website and click on the parts button. Places everybody. Who knew? Who knew? He knew. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who I don't even know how to say it now. Huh? What? What? <laughs> well, you're the one who's talking. What's going on here? most fun I've ever had with my clothes on. <laughs>